One thing a lot of people begin to notice about Japanese aircraft is their fanaticism about radial engines. Name 10 different Japanese aircraft and you could almost bet money that they were using some type of radial. It wasn't some weird collective cognizant dissonance, there was an actual reason why Japan exclusively used radials. They didn't have an inline engine that was worthwhile. They had some designs, but they were either underpowered, horrifically unreliable, or relied on imported materials from countries they were either at war with, or were having their transports sunk en route to. Japan, however, wasn't ignorant to the potential benefits of an inline engine versus a radial, and it even had a prototype interceptor in development that was to use an inline engine. Seeing, however, that they themselves couldn't produce one, they reached out across the world to their ally Germany to ask for some help. Germany was willing to assist and sent them the blueprints for the Daimler-Benz DB601, which Kawasaki licensed and produced as the Ha-40 domestically. With engine in hand, they finalized the interceptor prototype, called the Kai-60, and discovered that it handled about as well as a drunk man driving a Reliant Robin. When the cause was linked to the Kai-60 being horrifically overweight, along with undiscovered design defects, Kawasaki entered the Kai-60 into a weight savings program and redesigned to save it. While their chance to fulfill interceptor orders originally would be robbed by the Kai-44 showing much better characteristics than the Kai-60 could ever dream of, Kawasaki believed they could still make something useful out of their failed prototype by converting it to a thoroughbred fighter. This new fighter would be called the Kai-61 Hien, meaning Flying Swallow. Being as it was an alteration to the Kai-60 and not a new complete design, it looked nearly identical, though it incorporated many under the hood changes and modifications that lightened it considerably and made it much more refined than its interceptor counterpart. Taking first flight in December 1941, great skepticism was held by the higher-ups regarding the Kai-61's shift away from being a light, nimble aircraft towards instead being a comparatively heavier and sluggish fighter, citing the higher wing loading statistic when compared to the Kai-43. As a short note, higher wing loading usually means being less maneuverable. Kawasaki would not stand for such slatter of their new fighter, however, and orchestrated a fly-off to prove it was plenty capable, with the competitors being two prototype Kai-61s, a Kai-43, a prototype Kai-44, a Lag-3 that somehow got to Japan, a BF-109E7 that Germany had given them for evaluation, and a captured P-40E Kitty Hawk. The Kai-61 flew faster than all of them, and only lost to the Kai-43 in maneuverability. With the skepticism dashed and higher-ups pleased, the Kai-61 soon entered into service and proper production, and then was deployed to the front. In the front lines, it held an early advantage over older P-40s and other similar aircraft, and even spurred a wave of panic among some pilots wishing for P-38s to counter the new fighter. Which, ironically, Allied Intelligence originally believed to be a copy to BF-109 or C-202, leading to its nickname of Tony by the Allies. Though the fighter itself was capable and performed well, it was soon overshadowed by newer Allied aircraft in theater and began to struggle. While the Ha-40 engine was better than the alternatives Japan had for inlines, it still suffered reliability issues since at the core was the DB-601, which was a high-maintenance engine that required precision manufacturing, something Japan struggled with. So, in the rough conditions of Pacific Islands and bases, the engines had a habit of breaking down. And even when the engines worked and the Kai-61s got airborne, it was in a sky full of F-6F Hellcats and P-51 Mustangs flown by well-trained Allied pilots, something that Japan was sorely lacking in this latter stage of the war. As Japan was pushed further and further back, Kai-61s were refitted to high-altitude interception duties with new engines. Though without effective superchargers or turbochargers, they lacked the needed power at altitude to intercept American B-29s hitting the main islands. Some Kai-61s were flown in ramming attacks against B-29s to mixed success, while Kawasaki was busy working on the Kai-100, which used a radial engine instead geared for high-altitude interception on the frame of an improved Kai-61. At the end of the war with Japan's surrender in 1945, 3,078 Kai-61s were built, with 275 having been converted to Kai-100s. Nearly all would be scrapped post-war as Japan was occupied by the Allied forces and began rebuilding. Four Kai-61s survive today. Tail number 6117 is on display at the Kagamiyagara Air and Space Museum in Japan. 640 is under restoration to airworthy status in New Zealand to be later sent to the Military Aviation Museum collection in Virginia. 
379 is in storage at Fantasy of Flight in Polk City, Florida, and 299 is under restoration to static display for the Papua New Guinea National Museum and Art Gallery.